Hello and welcome to another devlog. I have a handful of things to talk about this time around, but first let me say I'm recording this on my laptop, so I apologize if the audio quality is lacking. Now let's get right into it. Like I mentioned in the last video, I wanted to avoid letting players take the boat onto land. And my first idea was to just put a wall around the island, but that didn't work out very well due to the odd shape of the island. The next idea I had was to disable the controls when the player came into contact with the island, but that was causing some other issues. So next I tried locking the boat's Y coordinate, which means it can't go any higher, so when you come into contact with the island it doesn't let you move up at all. This worked to stop the boat from getting onto the island, but it had a negative effect on the movement. So I had to think of a way that I could limit the height of the boat, but still allow it to move how I want it to. I was able to solve this by not adding walls around the island, but instead adding a ceiling. This worked effectively to prevent you from taking the boat on the island. And while I was at it, I also added world borders so you wouldn't be able to ride your boat right off the edge of the world. Now in the time between now and the last devlog I had made, I haven't touched anything to do with the shop, and I believe all I've changed is this collider stuff. But somehow, the shop stopped working. It seemed like a variable wasn't getting updated, because you had to buy all the upgrades twice. This bug was a bit of a challenge to find. It turns out what was happening is the shop was being opened before all the tool data got loaded into the scene. Which means the tool data was being loaded from the previous day. That means I just had to do some reordering in my code to make sure the data got loaded before the shop opened. Now something that had been bugging me for a while is that I wanted to use the same button to interact with the boat as I did to sell fish. But the problem with that is, every time you try and sell fish while you're in the boat, it'll kick you out of the boat. And that just seemed like a minor annoyance that I could easily avoid. How I handled this is by creating an interactable interface. So now both the boat and the cell location are considered an interactable, and each interactable has a priority associated to it. So now if you're in range of both the boat and the cell location, since the cell location has a higher priority to it, you can sell your fish without getting out of the boat. There is one potential problem I see with this, where if somehow you get into the cell location while you are not controlling the boat, there's no way you can take control of the boat. But I could potentially fix this problem by lowering the priority of the cell location when you don't have any fish. I also fixed another bug that I was having a hard time tracking down for a while because I couldn't figure out how to recreate it. It turns out it was caused by the combination of the movement and interaction scripts. So if you get out of the boat while the boat is moving, it seems to store the velocity in the player, and then when you cast a line, that velocity is applied and the player starts sliding away. I fixed this bug by just ensuring that the player velocity is set to zero whenever you leave the boat. I also played around with some potential max speeds of the boat once you get some better upgrades for the motor, and I was starting to realize that I needed a little bit finer control when you get close to the dock in order to get to the cell location. I decided to add a zone around the island that acts like a no-wake zone. So whenever you're in this zone, it'll just lower your max speed so you have a little bit better control of the boat. At this point, I just really felt like learning something new, so I went headfirst into learning as much as I could about making shaders. I did a lot of reading and played around in some old software called RenderMonkey, and it really gave me a much better understanding of how to use shader graph in Unity. Using what I had learned from this, it was a lot easier to make the changes I wanted to to my water shader. So the first thing I did with it was add some waves so you can see the water moving up and down along the shore of the island. I tried making some other changes too, but I'm starting to hit my limit as an artist more than anything. What I really want to do is make the seafoam along the shore less uniform and break it up a little bit, but I've not quite figured out how to do that yet. I tried a few different ways of adding some noise to it, but I wasn't really that happy with the results. So there may still be some changes coming to the shader in future videos. Next I moved on to something else that I had mentioned in a previous devlog. I started working on line weight, and limiting the fish that you can catch based off their weight. Right now this is an early test of the mechanic. I think I'll end up keeping the line weight upgrades in the game, but I think they should be relatively cheap upgrades, so they're easier to get. 
I also want to work on changing the size of the silhouettes of fish based on their weight. That way you have some indication on what fish you might be able to catch. Now to finish off for this devlog, I thought I should learn at least one more thing. So I started looking at how to make textures. Out of the few models I have so far in my game, I thought the dock would be the easiest to use to learn. So I made a pretty simple wood texture, and I'm actually pretty happy with the results. After that I was feeling pretty motivated, so I decided to try and texture the boat too. But that didn't end up getting done, because it looks like I'm going to have to learn more about 3D modeling first. I'm having some issues with unwrapping the boat. Whenever I try, some of the polygons are deformed in really crazy ways. So anyone out there that knows any more than the bare minimum, I'll gladly take any advice. Now that should cover everything, so as always, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.